your view, the government of Kenya has actually expressed interest in having this kind of how how do you start anticipating? Because obviously you know Kenya has a lot of issues with terrorism and other things. But the whole idea is that uh, we can frame ourselves as people trying to help governments in terms of how do we anticipate, how do we help them be more strategic using these tools. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm also going to be brief. Um, uh, as Ines is saying, except I think part of what we've talked about over these two days um, is also how exactly one gets into building a particular capacity around thinking about the future anticipation. The reason I raise this is that um, I think we are going to be going into more difficult times next year. I already see it in the country where I live and I see it in the region. I think it's the same in this region. And what happens when times get difficult and people get desperate, they, they do desperate things. And I think foresight will be used in that way. And it will be really useful as we begin to think about um, what kind of advice or support one can give. But it's not just about, you know, what what do we want and how can we get it, but, you know, who we are, where we are, the condition we're in, how we want it to be, how we want to do things. And to me, as we begin looking at least at that unification agenda, I think this should be the lens. I think this should be what we can really contribute. Um, because otherwise, you begin to see these blocks forming everywhere. So we've got bricks and mills and canes, and the one seems to come up every week. Um, and the reason for all of this, I think, actually, often is quite opportunistic, actually. It's really trying to find ways to whether uh, create markets or create. And I think the question for us would be, what is it that we can contribute? And I really think it could be a different way of thinking about uh, about the future. The, uh, my very concrete suggestions are around, um, a few people have spoken about uh, platforms and repositories. Uh, I think for our part, we continue to suggest or propose the use of the foresight for development uh, platform. Uh, I think we talked in May about how to expand the Arabic content or lens to that platform and to customize as much as one wants. And I think we continue to think that this is a platform that can be used. Um, I would also encourage everybody in the room, I was checking just now, most people in this room are not profiled there. Part of what we try to do with the platform is just to help people find other people. Uh, and so I would encourage people in the room to please, and maybe I can ask for FSF to share the link for profiling. Uh, you will find there quite a large database we've begun to build of people doing foresight on the continent, and I think it will be really good for all of you to also be findable there, because this is one of the ways, I think, to, to build networks. Um, I think it would also be good for us to think about, uh, from a thinking and intellectual contribution and methodological contribution perspective, whether we could begin to um, put out some writings. Um, this could be in academic journals, but maybe also in popular journals. Uh, I have an, I can put Kofi on the spot. He's quite a big one around the role of media in, in creating and concretizing ideas, if you want, you know, really disseminating thoughts. Um, how can we link some of what we are thinking and talking about here into some of those conversations? Uh, I don't know what are the influential publications in this region. In Africa, we've got publications like New Africa. Um, there are quite a number of them that are really trying to shape how the continent thinks. Can we think about how to get this unified view into some of those publications? Otherwise, the discourse continues to be one of extremism and you know separation and all sorts of things. I think one could begin to have a bit of a different conversation, and maybe we could contribute uh, in this way too. Um, finally, I think um, in terms of the idea of meetings, I agree it can be quite difficult. But as uh, Olubenga has mentioned, I mean, UNESCO is here. There are other platforms that uh, will be having meetings. How can we leverage these and have additional side meetings if we already identify a, a core platform that we can use? And the same with some of the small projects. So I like very much Dr. Khaled's idea about um, how we can, uh, for example, act as peers as part of our own continued capacity building. Now, UNESCO has probably some uh, capacity building projects, and maybe others of us have, can we use each other as resources as a way to expand our own exposure and continued work? I think this is an excellent idea. Thank you. Um, and Dr. Zia. Yeah. <coughs> um, a few things very quickly. To me, what's quite important is to keep the purpose of this gathering in mind very squarely. I would agree with Olubenga. Um, which means, uh, in fact, 
networks have their own lives. They, they start to grow and then they'll die. They usually die if they're not held by specific tensions of champions of people who are really thrilled with it. If you put it in most institutions, sometimes they don't go farther than that because there's a the whole bunch of uh, administrative stuff. But it's a good balance of people who are championing it, individual people who are really excited about it to move, move it forward on very grounded expectations. I think that's, I want to emphasize this. And we also need to find a way to, to, in that purpose to see, you know, what is this group really doing? Is, is it useful to Africa? How can we get a sense of that usefulness when we come back and we meet three times or four times? Do we review what we've managed to achieve? Are we making a difference? Again, back to Geishi's point, you know, who are the people out there benefiting from this gathering in these four walls? Is the conversation staying in these four walls? Um, how do we uh, uh, take that out to people so that we can measure the usefulness of this network? The other one, I want to send a strong alarming system to be aware of the tribal nature of governance, which means the idea that sometimes we saw among ourselves that uh, preferences and individual interests tend to outstrip what the collective idea of the purpose is supposed to be. So don't forget about that. I think it's very important. And then um, the last one, I would say, not quite the last one, but the, uh, another one is to be aware of confusing content, which is a knowledge about what we're talking about, the usefulness of a specific method to address urgencies, needs, and wants of Africa and challenges with the logistics of organizing meetings. Which means we need to translate very quickly what we're doing in sharing information in between key round tables so that we don't confuse uh, the content about the real discussion about it's just not the future but the present of the key issues that we're facing in Africa and then organizing meetings and so, okay, we've got to meet here and so forth. So which means what? We need to make time to get together. I think two days, and I would challenge many of you guys, is not enough. Yeah. Because it forces uh, many of us to have an agenda that is very speedy, quick. We don't discuss things deeper enough. There's a fragmentation of ideas. And some of the serious topics are not even in touch. Oh, I gotta take the flight and leave. We don't have the time for this. When are we gonna make the time to discuss this very important business? I mean, you made that point. When are we gonna do that? I'm not saying we should spend a week, but at least take the time, which means we look at the agenda, the program itself. How do we design it as an instrument of future uh, studies or LIS or anything else? That's the one. And then, the last one, um, I think we should have two things on our agendas. The other one is, you know, it should be an immersive program, not just in the four walls. We spend two days in the four walls, we don't have any time to see what Morocco is all about. It should be a field trip. Yes, I'm looking at the big trends in Morocco as well. <coughs> even if it's a half day, or even if it's a two hours bus drive and going around so that we don't confuse being here among ourselves and having been to Morocco. There's a whole experience out there that's really good. And then the last one on the agenda, I would suggest again, that we need to open up for about an hour to discuss anything else around the world or new, what I call the wild card, surprises. You know, what is, for example, uh, uh, Khaled doing in something that may not have anything to do with us so we can make some connection with, between ideas. Is that okay? Thanks. Dr. Sia and Dr. Well, I, I, I feel uh, sort of sick with everybody here. We want to go home and we are all tired. And, uh, I, I, try, I try to be the last actually and, uh, and uh, uh, not to repeat what uh, ever is said by others. But two very fast comments. Number one is uh, the notion I have that uh, we need to bridge between uh, uh, the Middle East and Africa. I would 
say that we need to bridge actually between Africa and the Middle East. I realized in this meeting 